this is really the last thing that the three of us are gonna do together on this. <laughs> you can't air this. I mean, people are gonna be like, what is wrong with these people? Welcome to Entertainment Weekly's Three Rounds with the women of the bold type. I'm Sam Heifel and I'm joined by Megan Fahey, Aisha D, and Katie Stevens. For round one, we are drinking the Jenny from the Block, which is a spicy margarita. Cheers. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, Cheers. Oh, 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 we're gonna go. This is the most workout. fun interview. That's but also like it is a workout, because this is heavy. Yeah, I like that. I'm gonna throw it all the way back to a question I think I asked you guys like five years ago, mm. which is, what is the story of your first meeting? The first time you three met? Well, I was so late. my husband <laughs> was performing <laughs> at the so place. dumb. <laughs> I love this joke. It just like gets better every day that Megan is a part of my marriage. Sure. <laughs> the first time the three of us were in the same space together was in New York. Katie's then boyfriend, now husband, who I am not married to legally <laughs> yet. <laughs> <laughs> was playing a show in Times Square. Um, he's one of the founding members of Boys Like Girls. Have you heard of them? Founding. <laughs> She's showing me up with my own husband. <laughs> it, it was amazing. They were playing this incredible show. It was like the 10th anniversary of their first album. And Katie obviously came in. With I was a Paul. groupie on the tour bus, and we <laughs> I had come from Boston from their previous show. Yeah. yeah. We met your parents that same night. It was yeah. like a whole family. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was fast. And yeah. honestly, the rest is. Sincerely history. Yeah. So it was pretty instant, the, the friendship, the connection. Yeah, yeah I hated certainly. them immediately, and it literally has <laughs> never changed. You're like, finally, the last press day. Yeah, no, I can yeah. really let it all hang out today. <laughs> what was the first scene you all shot of the bold type? First scenes I shot were with Nicole Boucheri. Okay. That was your first day on set? The first, the literally the first day on set, we were shooting the scene where we're like sitting at a coffee table and there's candles on the table and we're packing sex toys into um, a that was suitcase. Your first day? Yes. Mm -hmm. I do not remember my first day. Might it have been with Sam? I do not remember my first day on set. I just remember mine very vividly because I was like literally sitting at a, a candle lit coffee table packing dildos into a suitcase. Right. I mean, how, how, how could you how forget? How could you forget? Yeah. yeah. I don't remember my first scene, but I do vividly remember shooting the scene where we were, it was me and Matt Ward when we were like on the rooftop. Oh. Mm -hmm. And I'm drunk and I call you and I'm, oh, I'm that's laying right. on the like. Wait, you look so hot too on you that. You so hot. You were like laying on the, like, what, is the, what is that, a desk? The desk, the, the, the front desk. Counter? How do you pronounce that? <laughs> oh yeah, you were on the front, oh, at the magazine. Yeah. At the, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's funny because I don't think anybody really notices, so we shot the pilot in Toronto, mm -hmm. and then we started shooting the actual series in Montreal, so like that we were- That was my shoe, I swear <laughs> that was my shoe. We were in an actual office building for the pilot, yeah. and like then when it, cuts to episode two, the configuration of the bullpen is completely oh, yeah. different than it was yeah. in the pilot. Was there a moment that you guys realized that the show worked? I'm very cynical, so I was always <laughs> like, there's no way this is going anywhere. No one's gonna see it. True. We're getting canceled tomorrow. She was like, it's gonna get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just It because will get canceled. Sometimes you have to protect your heart. Right. When you love something. And like, <laughs> you know, that's what I did. And not to say I'm an expert at it, but I'm very good at keeping people at arm's length. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting worse at it though, which I love for you. Yeah. I know. You're starting to really fail at that. Yeah, yeah. like letting people in, can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. I remember Melora saying like, oh, I'm gonna buy a place in Canada. Yeah, she was like, the show's, it's gonna run. She was like, it's gonna run for like, she actually did say verbatim, it's, it's gonna run for like five years. Wow. And, and it did. Now looking at it, like I look back at moments that we had and... Katie's getting a phone call, guys. <laughs> Ever, sorry. No right one? now. Who is it? Answer it. It's my dad. Answer it. Oh. Dad, I'm in the middle of an interview. <laughs> Hi, Mark. I'm putting you on speaker. You're gonna be on Entertainment <laughs> Weekly. Mark. I love it. Hello, Mark? Hello. Hi. Hello. Welcome to our interview. Okay. No, I swear to God. Hi, Clara. 
Hi. I'll call you after. Hey. We're in the middle of an interview. Yeah, ask me some questions. I'm ready. <laughs> What's your favorite part of the bold type? What's what? your favorite scene yeah, of the bold type? Who's your favorite character? Uh, I like Megan's character myself. <laughs> <laughs> Are you f***ing kidding me? <laughs> All right, goodbye. All right, love, love you. you. Bye. Bye. For round two, we will be drinking the Sorry Not Sorry, which is a rosé tequila drink. Cheers. Cheers. Goodbye. Imagine tequila and rosé in one. In drink. one large glass. Ah. That's refreshing, right? Mm -hmm. That's actually really nice. This is, yeah, see, that's why uh -oh. I, I never do cocktails. There's almost no aftertaste on this one. Whoop. You right. guys have had multiple new showrunners over the years, which yeah. is always interesting. Have you guys, have you felt a shift each time? Do you feel like that was a part of kind of keeping the show fresh in a way? Honestly, I feel like the heartbeat and like the true like soul of the show, even though like our showrunners work incredibly hard and they're like a huge part of making the show what it is. Yeah. Our crew is actually like, to me, the constant and the thing that like really like represents the soul of the show. Cause like it felt like very much like a family. So I don't, I don't know, for me personally, it just kind of felt like I was always with the same people, so it felt yeah. like a constant yeah. kind of thing. I, yeah, I mean, I feel like on the flip side of that, I actually think it's really cool that we had so many showrunners because it does make a difference, yeah. and every voice that comes in is unique, and each season has sort of been infused by, like, a brand new energy, which is sort of, I don't and know, I, I think it's great. I will say, too, you know, seasons four and five, we had Wendy Stryker Hauser, and Wendy has been a part of the show yeah. since season one. She was always there to listen to our concerns and to help us change things and try to fix things and make them better when we, you know, were feeling uncomfortable or, or, or wanting we've to also, change I, things. I feel like we've never actually had a showrunner that didn't do that for us. Like, yeah. And I think each showrunner that has come in has sort of like, enabled that to be the case, so. Yeah. I remember when the show first came out, everyone, myself included, was very obsessed with the character of Jacqueline, because when she, <laughs> yeah, my shoes are again. so squeaky. <laughs> when Jacqueline first enters, it's like the shot of the high heels, right? And you think you're about to get like this crazy evil boss lady. And then you find out that she's like a lovely mentor and it's such a great twist on the character. Do you all have real life Jacqueline's? Or anyone in your lives that you kind of oh, view yeah, that way? Yeah, totally. And Melora has certainly been that for us too, you know? Like she's been such a, a great presence on the set and like it's very important to her that she feels like available and you know, I, I think we all feel like really lucky for that. I feel like my life is actually really f like kind of filled with my own little Jacqueline's. And like, obviously Melora is one of them because she's a f***ing bad b yeah. She's been doing this for a really long time and like has done so many different like genres. Like she hasn't been in one f space. Mm -hmm. I watched the show and was inspired <laughs> by these women because I've been lucky enough to like, I know I sound really lame by saying my mom, but like, I think my mom is a badass. She asks for miter saws and power tools for Christmas because she like knows how to renovate a home. Yeah. And my mom like has her entire life just like anything she's just decided to do, she's and she done. does it. Like she doesn't ask for anybody's permission. She doesn't like wait for somebody to tell her it's okay to do something. She like does it. <laughs> And I've always gotten to watch that and been like, wow, my mom is so much cooler than me. Yeah. And I feel like being a part of a show where, you know, people are viewing us as these like empowered, bold women, it's like I can't take credit for being that without talking about how I was raised by someone so cool. Yeah. We're gonna talk guest stars, because you all have had a lot of amazing guest stars. Yeah! Who's been your favorite guest star, or the one that you freaked out about the most personally? Raymond Sloan. I... That's a good one. Yeah, 
Yeah, she was great. I'm sorry to jump in, but I just felt like it was. I mean, also movie. Carson Kressley, yeah. though. Carson's yeah. great. And the way that Carson became a part of the show was because when we did Celebrity Family Feud, it was against RuPaul's Drag Race. And Carson was like, I could totally be on your show. I could be like, you know, like just like a, a consultant or whatever. Yeah. And our showrunner was there and she was like, are you serious? Because I'll write you into the show. And then she did. And then she did. She follows through. I really loved the line where he was like, you know that her hair is not red, right? Oh yeah. Because we've all been thinking that forever. Right. And then he was like, she goes, yeah, but he thinks I will be if I keep saying it. And he goes, well, in that case, call me 25. <laughs> Wait, how do you know the line? That up? Katie is, she had, does have a photographic. She had, like, yeah, like, she's like, I have a if, we can think of a, if we can think of a moment in the show, she knows everything about the show. <laughs> All right, I think it's time for round three. <laughs> I think <laughs> it is. For round three, we are drinking the Golden Pineapple, which is a rum punch. No better way to end our bold type premiere Cheers press. Cheers to the bold type. <laughs> Let's talk about the end. You Here, guys are, cut. you have you have wrapped. Mm. What, what was the final day of shooting like? Was it what you expected? It was really chill. No one had any feeling. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was very emotional. Mm. Um, <laughs> Don't. No. No, because then I'll go there, with, I won't. Um, <laughs> I'm getting sad because this is like I know. our last one. No. <laughs> oh no, I'm laughing and crying at the same time. Yeah, I didn't think, well, I didn't think this would happen. Um, <clears throat> it was a really emotional day, but it was like beautiful and exactly <laughs> what I thought it would be. Um, yeah, because you knew, because you were. <laughs> I was the averaging. Entire I, you were like I was averaging a cry a day. A day. She's for like, about so a know, week and a half. This is the last time you're gonna use that prop. You'll never see that <laughs> prop again. And you were like, I was not that intense. I know. Well, I was just kind of like, you know, the day we wrapped Jane's set or the day we wrapped the office, I just like really wanted us to be able to like be intentional with each other. Oh no, <laughs> no, I'm getting so sad. I literally no. won't go there. Like I can't. I, <laughs> if I go there, it'll be really bad. Were you all able to actually like shoot your final scene? Like a lot of times, obviously you don't shoot chronologically, but with series finales, I know sometimes they try. Like, were you able to shoot your last scene last? The thing that felt the most like a final scene was the last scene that we did in the fashion closet mm -hmm. because it was just the three of us. It was probably the second to last day. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's like a very emotional scene. And like, even though the scene didn't really call for it, we were sobbing filming it. And I think we both individually got like one take each of the scene. Um, I don't actually feel like this will be over until the very last episode airs. Mm -hmm. But in a way, like doing this, like we've been able to do press for you know the last five years and that's always been so exciting and so fun we've experienced things together that other people maybe don't really understand like even people in our lives like yeah. our intimate partners and you know our, our our people they don't always understand it um so we got we got to have that moment and then like the last day it was like uh i, I remember i had to make a speech and it was like about um, I read Future. it and I was like, this is so sappy, like whatever, I'll say it. And it was like about like our futures and oh my God, everyone in this room is gonna do amazing things. And I was like, okay, cool, whatever. And as I was saying the speech, I was like, oh my God, I'm like looking at these people um, that have like been in my life for like five years. There um, it is. Shut up, I don't wanna <laughs> do it, but like, that was a very like perfect kind of way to like, end the whole thing. I don't know, I feel like as long as I have them in my life, in real life, like I'm never actually gonna say goodbye. No. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Wait, that was. <laughs> this is really the last thing that the three of us are gonna do together on this. <laughs> you can't air this. I mean, people are gonna be like, what is wrong with these people? No, they're gonna see that we're just sad. But uh, we will be is... starting a girl band. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone look out. Um, this truly is the last thing that we're gonna do just the three of us, and so I think it's just really hitting us all. Like, I think when we left Canada, we were like, yeah, okay, bye. Mm. Uh, but this is sort of different. This feels really um, different. My idea is that whatever shows we do after this, we convince our showrunners to like, have us do cameos on each other's shows. And should we be background on Aisha's new movie? Can you? Let's show up as extras. <laughs> yeah. <Can you> come? <laughs> I'll be there at the bar. But honestly, cheers. Cheers. <sighs> to honestly, you guys. To the honestly, multi. cheers. Like, honest to God. Honest to the universe. This has been Entertainment Weekly's three rounds with the women of the bold type. The series finale airs June 30th.